We got Muhammad King Mola Wall back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Liam McGeary at Bellator 213 on December 15th. Mo, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. Just chilling. I bet. Uh, what's on deck for Thanksgiving this weekend? Uh, some training, uh, some eating, and Mo eating, and uh, watching TV. That's about it. Watching football. Okay. Are you seeing any family at all, or is it just a solo Thanksgiving? Uh, just family and friends, you know what I'm saying? But not my not my mama and them, but just family. Like, I consider family and friends family, so it's all the same to me. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. I'm, I'm all about that, too. Um, let's talk quickly about, uh, you mentioned eating there. Uh, this fight is at light heavyweight. I know you expressed interest in going down to middleweight. Uh, why, why did you decide to stay at uh, 205 pounds? Well, I got my body fat tested, and I, got, I did a body comp test. And for me to make 185, at 188 pounds, I'd be at 0% body fat. Which would make you miserable. I mean, anyone having to do that, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm just too lean, man. I'm too, I'm in between. You know what I'm saying? I'm just too lean. If, if there was a weight class, like a, if there was like a 195 weight class, you know, for, for real, I'd be, I'd be a fit. I'd be good there. I'd be, I'd be at that weight class. No, if they could have something in between, that would be, uh, that would be perfect. Um, so let's talk about the last fight quickly. Not much to say there. Uh, was it just a simple case you got caught? How do you sort of look at that performance against Ryan Bader? Well, you know, I didn't get a chance to really perform. Um, what happened was, sorry, I'm trying to find a good lighting. Um, what happened was, uh, when he caught me with the left hook, I was, I recovered, but when he got on top of me, overshot me. And if you watch the fight closely, his knee hit me in my head. So with the, the follow-up shot, see through, didn't even land. One hit my shoulder, one hit the like the gray top of my head, but the knee hit me and it just, it just, it stunned me. I, I was froze. I saw, I seen everything, but I just couldn't move. So after the fight, I go to my my cut man, Matt, and I'm like, man, I think I got headbutted. And he's like, nah, you got punched. I was like, nah, I know I, I know I got punched, but then got headbutted. Going back to the locker room, my boy's like, Mo, you got knee. I watched the fight again, and he, Ryan Bader, when he when he went to um, jump on me, he overshot me and actually kneed me behind my head. You know what I'm saying? So I never had a chance to really shake back from that. But, you know, I'm hoping, that you know, I got, you know, let me get a good performance against Liam. And hope I get a chance to get back in there with Bader at 205. Or if I get past Liam, I wouldn't mind fighting Ryan Bader's punk ass. Not Bader, but uh, Matt Mitrione's punk ass at heavyweight. Okay. What, why uh, Why Mitrione? What, is there like a thing there? Why? How come you want to fight him? Man, you know what? Uh, you know, he runs his mouth. And he's mad because I thought that um, him and him and, uh, him and and Roy Nelson should have won an extra round. Or, or, you know, because I thought, you know, I thought maybe, you know, it, it was close by. I thought Roy... He should win an extra round, and I said that, and he got mad and, you know, started running his mouth. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, you mentioned your opponent here, Liam McGeary. You must have been pretty happy you're facing a former champ. Like, this is the type of win that could get you right back in the driver's seat. Yeah, but the thing is, I like Liam, man. It's my boy. It's my first time really fighting a friend. So Really? Okay, did you guys train together before, or what's sort of the connection there? No, nah, we're just cool, man. Like, he's a cool dude. I'm cool. Real recognized, real. And, you know, I... <laughs> Uh, he's a good guy, man. He's, he's, he's funny. You know what I'm saying? You know, the black, I call him the black pikey, the black Mr. Bean. He's just a cool dude, man. He's funny, man. He's a good guy, man. And, you know, hopefully, you know, me and, you know, my thing is we're friends. So, Liam, you get a chance to knock me out, knock me out. If I get a chance to knock you out, I'm going to knock you out. Because if I, you know, when you fight guys, you want to damage them. You, you, you hit them a bunch of times to ruin their career. But one punch, one clean knockout won't ruin them. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, since we're friends, we're going to go for that knockout so we won't hurt each other's career. Yeah. No, I, I know that must have been difficult. Was there any reluctance when they offered you this fight where you're like, hey, is there anyone else I could fight? Or were you just like, I'll, I'll take whatever? Uh, you know, you, it's MMA. You really can't pick and choose who you fight. You can to, to a certain extent, but, like, I'm a fighter, so I don't really pick and choose. I just just take whoever they give me. Okay, makes sense. Um, how are you uh, structuring your training camp for this fight? Uh, it's coming up here on the 15th. I'm training like normal American top team, getting my getting my training in, mitts, wrestling, you know, uh, jiu-jitsu, all that, you know what I'm saying? Just the same old, same old. This guy stay healthy, guy stay smart, you know, going to that fight feeling fresh. Okay. What about training partners? Who are some of the guys you've been working with? Oh, this one killer, um, this one a guy named Bruno, Bruno Oliveira. He's a guy from Brazil. I got my boy Alexander um, Alexander Rach, R Rakic, um, R R R R A K I C. Yeah, he is, is he's the one who's fighting? Uh, is it Devin Clark? He's fighting on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That kid's a monster, man. I'm having problems with him, man. He's big, like, 
Like, you know, me, I'm, I walk around at 205. This dude came to camp weighing about 230, 235, 240. He's a young monster, man. He's going to be a problem for a lot of people. He, he's like a mixture like a, a mixture of Alexander Gustafson mixed with um, Latif, um, Latif, Alir Latifi. You know what I'm saying? He's like that. Like, he's, 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 he's young, young, hungry, in shape, loves fighting, and I love training with him. Okay. That's excellent, man. Nice to endorsement there. Um, what about recovery? What are you using right now for training camp to fix up those bumps and bruises? Man, um, CBD like always, but you know, I like THC, but obviously I can't touch it. So just CBD, my drops more than anything. You know what I'm saying? I, my boy, my boy has a, um, G I think it's, um, um, green cures, everything G C R U. It's a, it's a CBD powder, protein powder that I mess with too. You know what I'm saying? I take that as well. My boy, Billy. Probably, yeah. So yeah, how does, I, I'm, I'm because, how does that differ from the drops at all? Well, you know what? I just it, it's mixed in, you know, with the protein powder. So it's like you know, it's like an infused protein powder, CBD and fruit. It's like CBD infused. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's the same. It's just that I take it right after training. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Which is it's, good because I know you told me the CBD oil is good because you used to get headaches when you would spar, and now yeah. you said you don't get those anymore. I ain't had a headache in a long time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Probably because I got I got decent defense. Yeah. It's funny. But no, nah, but the CBD really helps, man. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm big on CBD. I'm a, I'm big on THC. But the CBD for fighters, I, I suggest fighters looking at taking some CBD, man. Um, what about the weight cut? When does that process start getting down to 205? I'm, 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 right, I'm at 205 right now. Oh, you are. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because then I, I never, just... I never cut no weight. Like, I, I, I have hyperthyroid, so I have a hard time. I have to eat extra to keep my weight up. I have hyperthyroid, so um. It's weird, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll, I'll go I'll, when, when I get to Hawaii on the 11th. I'll step on the scale, and I guarantee I'll be like 205, 206. Okay, interesting. I'm good. So you you get to eat a bit for Thanksgiving this weekend, then? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I eat, I eat every day. You know what I'm saying? I had KFC last night, some sodas. You know what I'm saying? I I eat whatever I want because I burn it off so fast. As you can see, I'm already sweating right now, and I'm not even doing nothing. <laughs> exactly. I know. Well, this, this is an intense interview, right? So what can I say? <laughs> um, what about your corner? Who's going to be in the cage with you that night? My boy, White Bug, a.k.a. Gary Clark, and and the Pikey from England, uh, Darren Ward. That's my boy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Nice, man. And how do you see this fight playing out? <sighs> Hopefully, I'm just going to get that knockout, man. That's the plan. Go for the knockout. You know, um, wrestling, I can wrestle him. He can do jujitsu. But the thing is, people of Hawaii, they want to see two warriors Banging. Hawaii has a strong fight culture. You know what I'm saying? Think to TJ Thompson started off with Icon. You know what I'm saying? And and, and Super Brawl. They had some they had some you know, BJ Penn, you know what I'm saying? They got a bunch of great fighters that come, that come from Hawaii. And Hawaii is a great fight. It's a, it's a great fight, pretty much fight state. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I'm gonna go out there, me and Liam go out there and entertain people. Uh, what does it mean to be a part of the, you know, one of the, I, I won't say the first, cause obviously there's, you mentioned those cards. There's been a lot of MMA cards in Hawaii in the past, but just being a part of, you know, Bellator's first venture there and even getting there before the UFC. Yeah. The first modern MMA. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a lot, man, because I, I, I like Hawaiian culture. You know what I'm saying? I, I look into, I read about the history. Um, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to go there and I'm going to look to try to leave, 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 you know, leave the King Mo crown there. You know what I'm saying? And do my thing. And when I'm done, go out there and visit some of the islands out there, you know what I'm saying, and meet some of the people of that of that of that um state. How long is that flight for you to get out there? Ooh, it's a long time because we got fly from here. I fly from Florida to Salt Lake City. And then from Salt Lake City to Hawaii is a is like probably a six hour flight. So it's probably gonna take me about eight, uh, ten hours maybe. And you sort of talked about it there, uh, you know, what's next after this? Again, I know you're not looking past Liam, but the plan is, you know, you want either Mitrione or a rematch with Vader. Is that kind of what you're eyeing after this? I wouldn't mind fight Mitrione or, you know, um, whoever, you know what I'm saying? Whoever Bellator has for me. I, I have to work my way to Vader eventually because he's the, he's the title, but I, whatever I could do to get my way to the title shot, you know what I'm saying, or get some big fights. You know, I, I, my thing is to go out there, have fun, get big fights, and just have fun, man, get paid. Who's winning between Fedor and Vader, do you think, on that January card? That's gonna be tough for man, cause Vader, Fader has some fast hands, and like to beat to beat Fader, you have to actually have some boxing skills. I think Vader can box a little, but I don't know. I think he look to shoot more, and when you try to shoot on Fedor, he can scramble back up to his feet, 
And think about Fedor is if there's any type of like um, chaos, if there's any type of chaos to scramble, Fedor thrives in that. You know what I'm saying? I've only seen him fail one time in a scramble, and that's when he fought Dan Henderson. Other than that, when there's when a scramble, like, you know, you remember when Heathcliff the cartoon? When Heathcliff fought, and you see a big ball of smoke, and you see a claw and a and the foot come out. That's how Fedor fights. Except when Fedor does that, he actually wins those scrambles and wins those exchanges. Watch the watch the Matt Mitrione fight. That was the only time that 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 time and the the, the Dan Henderson times are the two times I've seen him not do good in scramble. But when he fought Frank Mir, you saw that scramble, boom. They see no short left hook. That's a great prediction, and uh, this is a great interview, Mo. Always a pleasure, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you got any sponsors or shoutouts, the floor is yours, man. Oh yeah, um, at King Mo FH on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter that much, but I'm on I'm on uh, Instagram. I really don't do it that much either. I just need to start get back on it. Um, and shout out to Nearfall. Um, shout out to Venom. Shout out to you for having me. Shout out to Turp House, my boy, man, Brandon. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Um. Shout out to everybody doing something positive. Shout out to Bellator. Shout out to American Top Team, Blueprint Wrestling. That's the people I wrestle for out here in Florida. So, yeah, man, everybody doing something positive, man. Everybody out there growing good weed. Shout out to y'all as well.